Hey. <laughs> Brown water. Y'all ready? Let's do it. Got our Starbucks ready to go to the woods. <laughs> All right, guys, we are back in the swamp. And on this adventure, I'm joined by my good friend, Benji Hill. You guys have seen him before. And new acquaintance, Xander Budnick from up in Canada. Some of you might be familiar with Xander's content. He has got a great channel where he does a bunch of backcountry camping, fishing, kayaking, canoeing, all of this stuff. Xander has never been hunting before, ever for anything. This is his first time out, so join us. Let's see how we do. Yeah, that's the last damn thing you wanted to eat coming out to the dock and <laughs> your boat's gone. Oh man. Yeah. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna drop you off at the corner and just have you walk the edge into the wind and then just keep walking. We'll pass a spot where I've got into hogs before. Then we're gonna go to the other side and, and hunt in that way. Okay. That way we we're not stepping on top of each other. Got it. And I can pick you up along here. Yeah. Okay. Good. Sounds good. I got a light on me, so if it gets dark, whatever. Yeah, just flag me down. Yeah. Cool. I like it. <laughs> We just dropped off Benji here, and we're gonna circle around to a further point on this spit peninsula and try our luck with the last remaining few hours of sunlight. I feel like this is gonna be pretty addicting. Yeah. Alright, so We've we've got a we've got a wind that's coming into our face, so like a kind of an east northeast wind right now, and so we brought the boat around to the downwind side, and the pigs like to get out in this stuff and feed, and so we're just going to kind of work our way back and forth through this stuff, hoping to to bump into pigs. It's it's very loud walking in this stuff, but luckily there's there's some wind, it's causing noise in the grass, and then also the pigs when they're out feeding in a group. There's other pigs around, so they're all they're used to. Um, they're, they're used to hearing things in the grass. So as long as they don't smell us, we should be pretty good. Uh, or as long as they don't see us, if they see us, sometimes you can kind of get away with that. But if they smell you, it's you'll you'll never they they, they run away, uh, and you can't catch up with them. And so uh, that's the plan for the day is just kind of ease through this stuff, listening for pigs and looking for pigs. Um, and if we find one, then we can make a game plan on how to get close to it. Because with these bows, you got to get very, very close. So if we, if we happen to get close to pigs, uh, just remember to keep that your voice carries a long way here. So okay. just keep your voice down. Try to use hand signals. Um, and if they're, if the pigs are, uh, if there's not, if we don't have a lot of cover, like be aware of your body movements, you know, try not to like do any big movements like that. You know, they, they'll, they'll key in on that. So because Xander is so new to hunting, he wanted to spend the first couple of days just following me and trying to learn as much as he could. Later in the week, he's actually going to take his bow and we're going to try to get him very close to a pig, try to get him a shot. This is hog rooting, but it's old. See how the water's clear and like the mud is not freshly disturbed. You see the difference between what I just did and this stuff? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that could be weeks old. And the other thing to look for is uh, when this stuff, when they turn it over and the vegetation gets rained on, it kind of washes some of the soil off of it, so it's not, you know, it's not covered. Mm -hmm.
What are they eating out there? They like the rhizomes on these grass. Right. There's a root, there's a, 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 a stem. Not, not this, but there's other grass mixed in here with it. Yeah, yeah, starchy. It's like potato. But the reason that this is open is because the pigs have opened it up. Mm. I grew up hunting. It's just part of what I've always done, and so I've never questioned its place in the modern world. But Xander comes from a very different background, and he does have those questions. Questions like, is hunting ethical? Is it necessary? And what does it mean to be a hunter in a world where the activity might seem antiquated? Xander's going to answer those questions in his own words, in his own version of this week's events. You can check that out over on his channel. I'll link to the video in the description below. It has two different distinct leaf shapes. It's got a lanceolate leaf and then it's got an arrowhead shaped leaf on it. There's a tuber on it. This is smart weed. You can eat, that's edible. It's, um, it's got a peppery flavor to it, like it's spicy. It takes a little bit for it to kick in, but mm -hmm. it, it's, you know, yeah, a little bit. Mm. You got the spice. Yeah. Huh. Smart weed. Yeah. Clever. we're going to go in the morning is uh, I think we'll have a pretty good shot at, at finding something over there. Cool. Either way, man, it's just nice to be out here. Yeah. Usually the first day or two is just trying to, you know, you, you're bumping around. You're not really hunting hard. You're just like covering country, trying to find them. And then once you find them, then you kind of slow down and you start picking your, picking your spots and, and trying to get close to something. But we got to find them first. They're here somewhere. Man, it's pretty out here. pigs around him right now he's just trying to get out without messing them up so we can come back in the morning It's in there, you gotta like swim through it. It takes way longer than you think. Obviously, Clay knows. 
does this. So there's pigs out there. Yeah, they're on the edge, kind of hiking market. I marked the trees pretty good. They're heading back towards where he dropped me off. Have a good night. Good luck. <laughs> good luck. Have fun. Have fun. Easy job is good. Um, It begins. First time hog hunting here in southeast uh, USA. Kind of feel like I'm out of my element, but uh, that's how we like it. Never get too comfortable. We're going to slide into the wind here, looking at these cypress trees. You can see the winds kind of moving just, uh, left to right. Let's go see what we can find. Got some hog tracks here. Uh, pretty fresh. Uh, I think if we just keep tiptoeing through here and they're in here, I think we can uh, connect. second now could look over and see one of these guys and that's what makes it so exciting We're, uh, we're going through some head high. It's like walking through corn. Corn rows for pheasants. Can't really see anything, but no sign in here. Um, so we're trying to get out of it, but uh, just moving a little bit, listening, moving a little bit and listening. Note to self. Don't go in the head high grass. You can't shoot, you can't hear, you can't see. So if they're in there, we can tiptoe along and parallel them. But um, now I'm back in this good stuff here. And last little bit of light. Nice thing about hunting with these stick bows is they shoot just as good. And Low light is midday. Don't have any sights or any gadgets. So uh, this is prime time here, next 15, maybe 20 minutes. All right, super cool night. Uh, just about out to the pickup spot. And uh, got some hogs talking over here. I'm downwind of them. Um, they're between me and the water. So uh, I didn't disturb them at all. They were never moving fast, but I could hear them walking. And uh, anyway, that's exciting. Uh, I'm gonna get out of here, like I said, real quick, and uh, see if we can get some eyes on them in the morning. But I'm pretty sure uh, somebody's gonna be able to track these and uh, hopefully catch them in a better spot because this grass here is just way too tall um, to do anything with. Uh, I can't even move in here barely. So, all right, we're gonna go get picked up and uh, pick this up in the morning. There's a few bugs around. You gotta, you gotta, when you breathe, you gotta breathe through your teeth or you swallow them. <laughs> Just gotta embrace them. Day 
too. It's buggy, real buggy. Gonna try and move on those hogs we saw last night. Didn't really see them, but they were 50, 60 yards away and uh, making noise, acting relaxed, never winded me, never sensed me. So uh, I'm gonna try and tiptoe in and relocate those and get a shot here. close to the pig spot so we're slowing down listening a little bit more no fresh sign in here so hopefully they're still out where I saw them last night nice and quiet nice and cool but uh just a little bit buggy still so pretty nice morning though we just come out of the uh the thickness there and it's opened up. We've got tons of hog sign down here. All these holes. Kind of around the base of the tree here. What I'm thinking is uh, getting up on one of these limbs, just 10 feet off the ground, one of these old dead cypresses. Getting a little breeze on me and just uh, Having a little better view around. I think there's a pig right here. Holy crap. There's something right here. It's about 10 yards away. Oh, here it comes. Get that shot off you know hesitated just for a second finishing my shot thought i had good shot control um and you know what just ended up not being a, a shot so anyway super exciting that was my first pig i've seen i hope i got it on camera there but uh anyway we're gonna stay in the game here till dark that was fun
when they're like when they're actively feeding, you can hear them. They don't just pop a branch and or pop a you know reed and then stop. They like move constantly. I think they're bedded up right now, and those pigs we heard are just they, they get up and roll, and then they'll break something. You can hear them, but they don't move. And when they're like that, it's you can't hardly get it unless you know exactly where they're at. You can't hardly get in on them. Did you get a peep on them? Or just too far? No, I can see him. I mean, hell, you could see that pig is right there. That's right. They're in here. These, that, that stuff right there. They like come and pluck those off and eat that tender part. in here but there's just not very many wild hogs are um, they're a feral animal and they're invasive and they can do a lot of damage to the ecosystems and so so they eat uh, for instance they eat uh, sea turtle eggs um, endangered species uh, they can cause a lot of problems for am, you know amphibians um, and reptiles ground nesting birds they're they depredate on the nests and so a lot of times the resource management agencies, whether it be Fish and Game or the Fish and Wildlife Service, uh, a lot of times they'll come in and cull the uh, the feral hogs and so they bring helicopters in and basically just fly around shooting hogs and so they they do that in this area and I guess last year, the year before, they came in and killed a bunch of hogs and so it really knocked the population down and so I don't know if that's the whole story on why we're not seeing as much hog sign here as we have in the past, but it's certainly part of it. Well, that was a wrap, day two. No complaints, great day, and uh, looking forward to another day out here tomorrow. I think, uh, well, I hope those guys I see them coming. I hope they uh, got on some too. So, uh, well, well, what happened? I filled my waders. So ah, <laughs> swimming. So that was exciting. Oh, I see your whole <laughs> jacket soaked. <laughs> yeah. So that was fun. Man, it's, gonna, it's supposed to get cold tomorrow. What are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of clothes. <laughs> um, heard some crunching. Something heard me, and about 20 yards away, this thing came crawling right out. Thicket, 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 got three-quarter draw, found a hole, and I just couldn't tell what I was gonna hit. So I kind of like tried to see, and uh, it was all vital. Just got back down and started finishing the draw and big step through, so. Well, you got close enough for a shot, but no shot? <laughs> shot? Shot but no shot. Yeah. I got got the camera on it, so I think hopefully you can zoom in and see it move through my shooting window. Dang it. But uh yeah, it was close. I mean survival would have sent it, but I wanted to make sure I hit it in the armpit. So yeah. Tomorrow we should go to the other side of this island to the um the sand piles over there. Okay. No luck today. It was so fun getting out and following clay around. I learned so so much. I'm uh, getting a little bit more confident to go out myself and actually bring my bow out. And in fact, tomorrow is probably a good day for it. So I'm going to bring my bow out tomorrow because it seems like tomorrow is our best chance of seeing some pigs. And uh, Clay wants me to try my luck. So a little nervous, but pretty excited. So. So Clay and Benji were saying there's about three and a half pounds of venison here. 
and they would get about 60 pounds out of an average deer. If you were to go to the grocery store and buy three and a half pounds of beef like this, it would be, what, 20, 30 bucks? And far inferior. And far inferior. All right, that's done. I'm uh, sold. All the victims <laughs> are over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mm. Is that the first white tail, first deer you've had? Might be. I was fired up. I thought I was gonna get that thing still. Yeah. That big. It's challenging though, man. That covers. That covers interesting. Yeah. It's. It's real foreign, but it feels a little better out. Staying out all day helped. Just kind of starting to like, you know, you just adapt to it, I guess. Yeah. There's a big hog. Like 12 feet that way. Right there, right there. No, no, no. You don't shoot through there. I see it, I see it. That was a big pig.